Well, welcome back to the Be Unexpected podcast with Wyatt and Jake. And today we're diving back into Wyatt's story. And we're going to dive into Wyatt's story a few things about a few things that he really, really grew into love. Um, and today we're going to talk about Wyatt diving in and talking about basketball and Wyatt loves basketball. He's loved it ever since he was a little boy. Uh, yeah, Wyatt is extremely well at basketball. He loves to go get shots up, work on his drills, and create YouTube videos, right? Yeah, I uh, create YouTube videos on my other channel, uh, Life of Wyatt's Balling. I honestly started that because it was during the pandemic and I was bored. Mm-hmm. Check that <laughs> so, out. What, what's that one called? Uh, Life with Wyatt Spaulding. Life with Wyatt Spaulding. My uh, other YouTube channel. And that one, I I need to post more probably now, which I'm starting to do again. And But I was doing it during uh, like the pandemic because there was nothing to do. And I just liked working out and doing drills. And so I just started kind of doing it. Mm-hmm. And I do like other things like speeches and stuff on it, but. Uh, mostly like just drills and kind of just fun stuff. Sometimes I like making movies. Yeah. Where I don't have to explain a drill. I just kind of like am working out or like doing drills, but just not saying it. anything. And I got music going to it. Yeah. So, but yeah, I love basketball. The funny thing is, is that when I was like uh really young, like eight, seven years old, basketball was my least favorite. Like it was like football because of Nebraska football and then baseball because that was the first sport I ever played with baseball. Mm. Football and baseball were kind of my favorites, but then, like, when I was eight, like, uh, when I was eight, I was known, like, I, well, I still do, but I'd watch TV a lot and never go outside, so my parents would get me to go outside, like, just go outside for, like, 30 minutes, and so my mom's like, why don't you go outside and shoot free throws for, and see if you can make 10 in a row, and I was like, okay, well, my free throw is not at the free throw line, because I, like, was not strong enough, I have one strong arm, so I literally would take the ball and just, like, push it. Mm-hmm. So my free throw line was like right underneath the basket. And it took me like probably at least 45 minutes to an hour to make 10 shots. But I loved yeah. it, man. Yeah. I just kind of like the day I think I actually liked basketball quite a bit. Uh I uh I didn't like it a lot at first and I wouldn't say it was my favorite sport at that moment, but I started to actually follow basketball more. I mostly just like to shoot hoops cuz after I kind of shot those 10 shots or However many I shot, I was like, oh, this is pretty fun. And I would dribble the ball. And I remember my dribble was just like super high mm-hmm. and no coordination whatsoever. But in basketball, what was great is I could always go play by myself. You know, baseball and football, I found ways to like practice on my own. But it was kind of harder because you had to either find a wall or like a roof or something for baseball. And then football, you know, you try to find a target to throw at. But basketball, you could always find a hoop. And I would say probably around the time I was going through my stomach pains and issues when I was 12 years old is when I really started like basketball. And at that time, it's like the winter and, you know, basketball season's gone. So I'd always watch games. And when I'd watch the games, I wouldn't think about, you know, my stomach pains or anything. I just kind of would get into the game or like documentaries and movies. Like, I remember, like, watching Hoosiers. I really liked that show a lot, especially, like, in middle school. I had to watch that movie all the time. And then, like, do you remember, like, the kid uh, the kid basketball movie, Rebound? Yeah, or, was that? Yeah. Uh, no, gosh, I'm thinking of Air Bud. But, uh, but yeah, I yes, watched I Air Bud, too. Yeah. It was Air Bud, Rebound, and Like Mike was my favorite. Mm, yeah. I, my siblings hate that movie now because, like, I would watch it, like, every single day. Yeah. But I love those. Those are probably my three favorite basketball movies as a kid growing up. So I'd watch those all the time. Like I said, documentaries also. But just like watching basketball, because I was always sick a lot in the winter. So I always knew like, oh, there's a basketball game on. I could watch that with my dad and my brother. And so we'd watch the games together. And then when I got to be in fifth grade, I started to become like a Duke fan. And I was, I'm probably a bigger Nebraska fan than a Duke fan now, but from fifth grade all the way through high school, I was probably a bigger Duke fan than a Nebraska fan, just because Duke always made the tournament. But, uh, but Duke, I would watch those games all the time. Like, I remember my, my first team I really followed was like the 07, 08 team, I think it was. And they had like Shire, who is the 
uh, head coach from Duke now, Kyle Singler and Nolan Smith. And those guys, I love that team. And I really follow those guys. And I would just, like, I look forward to college basketball, like, every year. Like, it was, like, Christmas morning to me, the first day of college basketball, and then March Madness. I think March Madness should be, like, a national holiday because no one really does anything on the first two days. Who really works on the first two days of March Madness, right? Right, right. I mean, no one really does anything. So, like, I love, like, those moments in college basketball from when the season begins to when the tournament's over. And I know it's not, like, the most popular sport, because, you know, like, NFL and college football. But I'm just, like, a diehard college basketball fan, and I love it. But then for playing-wise, I played, like, second grade was my first year. I started playing, like, YMCA ball. And... Uh, my first grade, when I was in first grade, I didn't want to play. Like, I didn't think basketball was that much fun until later. So I played in YMCA basketball, and I was pretty terrible. I didn't really do much. But then when I started to get kind of good, and I'd go to the Y and shoot hoops and try to get shots up, and I started getting those stomach pains, and I got sick. So I missed, like, my whole season of basketball, like, the rest of my fourth grade year of YMCA ball, and then all my fifth grade year. But I would watch, you know, games. But then towards the summertime, I'm still going through some of the stomach issues and all that. But I was able to, like, shoot hoops outside of my driveway. And I just remember, like, this one day, it was summer. And I kind of, like, all, lost all track of time. I had no I had no idea what time it was or how long I'd been out there. I just remember, like, shooting and shooting. And I wasn't doing any drills or keeping track of how many shots I shot. But I just like was kind of like falling in love with the game of basketball because at that point I really wasn't hanging out with my friends a lot. It's been months since I've really been able to hang out with my friends consistently. And I just kept playing basketball by myself when I felt good enough. And that's when I started to really fall in love with it because when I step out onto like the basketball court or shoot in my driveway or at a park or anything, it just like it relieves all the stress. You know, the stress of having cerebral palsy or having medical conditions. And, you know, at that time being a kid, like, you know, you're different from everybody else. And it's, you know, you don't want to be different from everybody else. But with me, it was pretty obvious mm -hmm. I was different. And just basketball made me feel like I wasn't the guy that had the disability or the medical conditions. I was just a basketball player like everybody else. And I just always felt at peace. Like, shooting hoops, wherever it would be, driveway or in the gym. And then so sixth grade, I was like on the team and did everything in practice with them, but I never played because my parents told them not to put me in. <laughs> and I was like the manager, but they need an extra guy. So then seventh grade comes and I find I finally find a basketball team to play on. And it was my special Olympic basketball team. And I was so happy to like find a team I could actually play on and I was going to play because the year before I went to the YMCA like every single day after school to shoot hoops for like two to three hours on the weekend, two hours or hour and a half on the weekdays. And I just loved it, but I had no team to play on. Like I really was practicing for nothing. I was just playing for the love of the game. And then when I joined Special Olympics, and was on the basketball team. First, it was kind of like a culture shock because, you know, you're used to playing with kids your age. Well, I show up, and these guys are like adults. <laughs> and I'm like 13. Yeah. And so talking to, like, one of my teammates, Zach Womack, who's like 18, JR, who's like 30-something or maybe 28 or something like that at the time. And, you know, these guys are like adults or teen teenagers and I'm like just a middle schooler but it was like that was probably the best thing that ever happened in my basketball career was joining Special Olympics and you know all this time I've sat on the bench and I remember my first game was at Boys Town we had a tournament there and I'm on like JV and I'm starting and when my coach said I was starting I just kind of like gave him the nod like okay but inside I was like freaking out I was just <laughs> like crap I'm starting I've never started what do I do <laughs> but how did you really, yeah, how did you uh how did you guys get plugged into special Olympics? did your mom and dad know about it in the fremont area 
or were you guys looking around for something you be more involved in uh, so, in elementary and middle school? So it was like, you know, I wasn't a part of the middle school team anymore. Yeah. I was manager, but I didn't play. But then I guess I always kind of read tell the story, but when I was in fourth grade, my dad started a unified team. Mm. So unified is like, I'm an athlete, but a unified player would be you, mm. somebody without a disability. So we started like, like one of the first, if not the first unified team in Special Olympics, Nebraska. And we played like, I forgot what elementary school, but we practiced at some elementary school. And it was like me and Porter Ronan and Sky Charlie were the athletes. And then we had like Wes and I think like Nathan Kais played with us one time, mm-hmm. Ross Brown. And uh, like me, Porter and Charlie always had to be on the, on the floor. We always had to have athletes on the floor. So we played like this team. My dad was like that coach. And we played teams that I can't remember. Some teams were unified and some weren't. But uh, we played at state and I think we won even. Yeah. We got first and like killed this one team. Like we had to play them twice. But yeah, we were one of the first unified teams. So that goes on. And then we kind of like stopped it. I don't remember why. But then I think because my dad wanted, I started playing more YMCA ball. But then I got sick. And with me being sick, we just, like, didn't continue it. So I go on for two years without playing on a team. So my dad knew I wanted to play, and, you know, me doing the unified thing and special moments was good. But then he looked around, and he talked to uh, Corey Piercy, which is the Fremont special moment coach, and he's been doing it for years. So I just remember right like, here, my dad on the phone talking to him, and my dad calls me into, like, his office at home, and he's just like, I found a team for you to play on. And so I was like afraid I wouldn't make the team. And my dad's like, no, no, it's not like that. Like everybody makes a team and you're going to play. So I think my dad and mom really saw like, and I probably told them, but it really hurt that I couldn't like play with Wes and you guys and my friends and just, you know, sitting on the bench is boring. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So how did that, so that's when that unified started. So then as in middle school, were you playing, unified and with the special olympics or just one or the other no just special olympics and just unified special. was special olympics okay but there wasn't any like unified teams really mm-hmm. out there yet it wasn't like a big thing like it is now yeah and so when i joined the special Olympic team it was all traditional so it was all players with disabilities mm-hmm. and i remember like my first tournament was at boys town and i i was like one of the better defenders we had this really this guy like Matthew, I think it was. And he was really quick. And so, like, I was pretty good at defense. Because all I would do is, like, pressure the point guard. And then he'd, like, mm-hmm. make a bad pass. And we'd steal the ball. And Matthew would get it and score. So, I right away, I established I was good at defense. And then I made, like, two baskets. So, for me, it was good. Because it's, like, you know, I wanted to make a basket in my first special only game with Corey's team. And so, I had a pretty good tournament. And then I remember, like, we were undefeated the first year and we made all the way to the finals at state and we lost. <laughs> wow. I didn't take it very well. <laughs> yeah. I'd imagine. Yeah. I got kind of in trouble with my dad a little bit, but uh, I didn't take the loss very well in the finals, but and I didn't think I played very well, but it was kind of the first time, like, like, yeah, I know it's not as big as like, you know, if you or Wes play in the state tournament for uh, like high school. But for me, it's like, man, I've never played in a state tournament before. Mm-hmm. Besides, like, the fourth grade team I was on. So, it was really cool to, like, know, like, they have a state tournament for all these sports. And then I I think my first year I just did basketball. My second year I did track. And then tennis and football went on later. But basketball was the first sport I did. And I think basketball is, like, it's, like, probably top two or three, one of the most popular special, special mm-hmm. Olympic sports out there. Yeah. And then, so that just made me like fall in love with it more like basketball. Cause now I had a team to play on throughout uh, when you're younger. So there's, is there a specific reason why you fell in love with basketball right away? Was there, a, you said Duke, but was there an individual player? Um, well, obviously we all love Nebraska basketball, but we know how, how rough it's been for those years, but was there one player or a coach that had an impact that you followed growing up? Yeah. Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett. Uh, you had that yeah. jersey. Right. Yep. I had that like this throwback. Yeah. 
Timberwolves, Kevin Garnett jersey. And I uh, was in the first grade. You know, they had the book fairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His poster. I just thought, like, oh, this poster looks yes, cool. the book fairs. And then so I, like, I hung it up on my wall. And I just loved Kevin Garnett then. Mm-hmm. I actually got to see him play when I was, like, in third grade. And so that was really cool to see. So I followed Kevin Garnett. And I knew I wasn't really a Timberwolves fan. I was just a Kevin Garnett fan. Because when he went to the Celtics, I was like, oh, my favorite team is Celtics now. Because Kevin mm-hmm. Garnett's on that team. Yeah. But I think around that time, too, when he went to uh, the Celtics is when I really started uh, following basketball more. Because before, it was just like, you know, I'd watch Sports Center and that'd be it. And I'd watch his mm-hmm. highlights and just want to know how he did. And I didn't really care how the team did. I just wanted to know how Kevin Garnett played. So Kevin Garnett was like the first NBA player I really followed. And then I'd say, like, you know, like the little, do you ever get like the little kid books and they have like NBA players and they give you like a little small bio about their life or mm-hmm. how they made it to the NBA? So it's like from those books, I liked Steve Nash, mm-hmm. Tracy McGrady. Yeah. Tracy McGrady was the first jersey I ever got in first, first or second grade. I wore it to like career day and said I was going to play in the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> and then so it was like the Orlando Magic one. Mm. So Tracy McGrady, Kobe Bryant. I wasn't a Kobe Bryant fan because when I was a Celtics fan, you know, mm. but I respected his game. Yeah. And yeah, just those guys I kind of started to follow. Yeah. You know? Isn't that crazy how so many people that we didn't even know had such an impact on our life growing up? And and I even think of um when I was little, um, we're probably in elementary and middle, and you go to like Fremont games and you mm-hmm. see those guys playing and you're like, Oh my gosh, these guys are stars. I want to be like, um, I remember shooting hoops after the game. For example, I remember going to watch Fremont football and Fremont basketball when I was little and Matt Donahue was a huge idol and, and just seeing any of those guys uh, was pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I just remember even going in middle school, like yeah. dream about playing high school ball. Yeah. Like band playing and it's cool. And so, yeah, that's uh, some really cool moments. Yeah, and so I kind of had this dream that I was going to play high school basketball. Mm-hmm. And, like, I wasn't until probably eighth grade. I kind of was like, yeah, probably not because it's, like, my disability. Yeah. I mean, but I did kind of, which we'll get into later in one of these episodes, I did get to play a little bit in high school in a varsity game. But uh, back in, like, middle school, even when I started Special Olympics, I kind of thought, like, okay, I'll play Special Olympics, and then I'll be able to go out, like, freshman year and make the high school team. But but I kind of didn't really realize that, like, oh, like it's a lot more physical. And just, like, the pace of the game is so quick mm-hmm. that I didn't have the reaction time to, like, even catch the ball. So, like, eighth grade, I actually, like, tried out for the team. But at that point, I was, like, I was more, like, realistic. I was, like, ah, I probably won't make the team. Like, you make reserves or whatever, mm-hmm. but. I kind of like wanted that experience, like what it was like to try out for a basketball team. Because in Special Olympics, everybody makes a team. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. It's like there's no team to play it for us to play on. Right. And so I I tried out for eighth grade, made like the C team, so reserves. I think I only scored like one point. I made like one free throw, and that was it. And I was not very happy about that. <laughs> I was just like, if I was in eighth grade, my body was like, I look like a sixth or fifth grader. Hmm. You know, I just like that much small and like hand eye coordination because of my CP. I really wasn't that athletic, but I remember like my highlight of that was we had a three point and a free throw competition and at practice one day and I won the free throw competition, which was shocking because I'm terrible at free throws. But yeah. Then I was, and I shot like 50%, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, and all of this, uh, do you do you feel when you're on the court because you shared about weakness or hand-eye coordination or pace of the game does your body like running up and down the court do you feel do you feel strong or do you feel weaker at times or or does it change in like the seasons with the winter and the summer in that sense yeah so with cerebral palsy i uh I uh, play and I can feel like I get like the CP pain. So that's kind of pain because like, you know, my CP, my disability affects the muscles mm-hmm. in my body. 
And so, like, I'll play for hours. Like, I'd, I mean, I'd play for, like, two, three hours in the summertime. And my body would just feel so sore. And back then, before sophomore year of high school, I wore, like, this big brace on my right leg. So I really, like, would drag my foot. Like, it looked like I was mm-hmm. injured. And my right leg would be, like, it, like, would be this burning sensation through my leg. And I just kind of, like, over would overwork my muscles. And what I didn't kind of realize until I joined Special Olympics for the second time in seventh grade, because we only play like two tournaments. So imagine your season being five months, but you play like four games. And my dad's like, well, you guys have practice all the time because you have to teach your, your body how to do all the fundamentals of the game because like it doesn't come as quick mm-hmm. as some people. Like, that, you know, that if you don't have disability, it comes quicker because you can catch on. But like, I think you got to teach your body like the different movements and do the fundamentals over and over and over. And so that's what I kind of had to do, like dribbling and shooting. I actually really didn't get into doing basketball drills till I was third grade. And I watched like coach Carter for the first time. Uh And like, they ran like suicides or whatever. I didn't know what suicides were. So I asked my dad and then I go on out into the driveway and run suicides all because Mm -hmm. coach Carter. Yeah, and I would do that over and over. I'd practice my dribbling. You know, I could only dribble my left, and so I would really like just go up and down the driveway, and practice just dribbling with one hand and trying to protect the ball. I actually bought this book of basketball drills one summer, and I did like every drill in the book all summer long, like same drills every day, whether it was shooting, defense, and or dribbling. You know, I wanted to be. I wanted to be just as good as my parents were when they growing up and just as good as my siblings. And so just kind of like that repetition of doing the same thing every day is boring, but it was like necessary, especially for me was having a disability. You know, if I didn't do that every single day, I, I would have been an okay basketball player or, or maybe not very good, but I wouldn't be able to play at the level, the high level I can play at now if I didn't do the same drills every day. Yeah. And I, brain just couldn't process it especially with my like right side and yeah. teach my right side how to dribble and stuff which is pretty hard yeah and any for anyone with any sporter the more reps the better you get and even more in your sense like because mm-hmm. is it your right side your uh, is it your right hand that yeah my right yeah. hand and, and like now i can dribble it right i can dribble while jogging kind of and then like if but if i would do like a spin move i can put in my hand for like a second but then switch back to my left which I'm still working on. And, uh, but even like my left, like, you know, I have CP probably in my left hand because I can feel mm-hmm. it when I try to open things and everything. Yeah. And so I just, but I mean, I had to overwork my left. Like my left arm would really hurt mm-hmm. at the end of the day because I'm doing everything with it. Everything with the Not left. Not just yeah. basketball, but like, you know, just normal stuff. Right. And, Brushing your teeth. Right. Yeah. Like everything. Or like lifting stuff. Yeah. You, know, you got to put all the weight on the left side. And so, like, just doing the dribbling drills all the time would make my arms sore and everything. And I, I always had, like, a routine of how I would take, like, Advil. I knew yeah. I would take Advil, like, every night at the beginning of the summer, like, in June. But then by July, I'd get in good enough shape that I wouldn't need it to sleep at mm. night. Yeah. And I think it really started to show when I was, like, eighth grade, eighth or ninth, somewhere between there. Like, I could last longer. Then everybody on the court, because I was still playing like traditional. So traditional is all athletes, all people with disabilities play. Mm-hmm. And by my sophomore year, I think I really started to break out, like become a better shooter somewhat. Cause my brother was the coach, Westwood Weston was our coach. And like we had nine players. So you sub four in, four out. Well, guess who got to stay? I got to stay. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't for favoritism. Being me being Weston's brother, it was because I was on the new, I could bring the ball up with one hand. I could handle the ball better than some people with two. And then Wes knew I was in shape. So whether I was scoring or not, a lot of games, I had a lot of assists because what I would do is I knew how to push the ball. Mm-hmm. My dad taught me how to like push the ball off the court. So I'd everyone would be jogging and I would sprint down the court and then like feed it to our post all the time. And yeah. that's boom. So Just like most, that. I think the yeah. most assists I had was like, seven in a game one time yeah but so that was always that's always been really important to me is playing point guard like yeah if, 
if they want me to score and I'm the best shooter, I'll shoot it. But if I'm not the best scorer on the team, then I'm gonna get it to the guys that are, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And I I got to play JV and varsity some. So when I played varsity, I didn't even care about shooting. I was like, I'm gonna get assists. Yeah. So. And all this to say, I mean, I personally think you'd be a great coach. But what would you? Could you see yourself coaching uh, high school kids uh, one day, or even maybe younger? Is that something you desire? I don't know. Like yeah. when I was younger, yeah, because that's all I kind of knew. Like, oh, like, right. like sports. So go into like coaching. Yeah. And now so when true. I got older, I was like, yeah, I think I could do it. I think I could do like middle school and up. Mm-hmm. And I think like I'm just like not elementary hmm. kids. <laughs> no, nah, probably not. that would be tough. I That'd could do tough. a camp. Yeah. I've done camps in the summertime before, and I could do that like mm-hmm. drills and stuff. But I'm like pretty intense. Yeah. And my thing is like, if you're not going to work hard, I don't want you on my team, man. And I'm not talking about like in practice. I'm talking about like outside of practice too. Mm-hmm. Like you put in the hours if you really want to be here. But mm-hmm. then too, like I've, my brother went into coaching some, like some kids and he told me the good, a lot of good, but there are also some negatives about coaching too. And I don't know. I think like I could see myself coaching someday. But now at like 27, I've gotten like more opportunities to play than I have when we were in like in high school or middle school. Like I'm playing unified with the intramurals at, at the University of Nebraska. We get to go to some tournaments and there's nationals and stuff for that. Um, I'm playing like – so I get to play in a league every week, which before I never got to play in a league. So I think like right now I just kind of want to play. Because, mm-hmm. you know, coaching takes up a lot of time. but. I think I would like to go into broadcasting maybe mostly. Mm-hmm. I yeah. did uh, the – I was like the color guy for the Fremont High High School one year in like 2019 with Rich Ray, and that was pretty fun. I think I like fit that more because mm-hmm. I know a lot about sports and I know a lot about the history of basketball. I really enjoyed doing stats. When I was in middle school, like seventh grade, I started doing like book. Like keep track of points and stuff, and I love doing that. That made mm-hmm. like being the manager so much more yeah. fun. And yeah. so I think I could see myself going into that first, but I never leave coaching off the table because I love the impact that a coach makes. If you're a good coach, and the players want to work hard, you can push the players to be better, mm-hmm. and you can teach the teach the kids like you know sports kind of prepares you for life and mm-hmm. fa- how to face adversity on and off the court. You know, yeah. So I don't. I wouldn't say. I would put coaching off the table yet. Probably not. Probably won't go into coaching in the near future, but in the long run, I could definitely see myself like being an assistant yeah. at a high school or coaching like AAU basketball. It's pretty fun mm-hmm. to watch. Best way yeah. that. So, yeah. 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 I remember all the coaches that have made impact in my life. And so, and the best, best part of it is the building the relationships. And, you know, if you don't have the relationship or, or anything, you're, like you said, you're not really going to listen or not really going to want to play for your coach. So that's huge in that aspect. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think that's why I wanted to go into coaching is when I was younger, because I wanted to make a good impact, you know, mm-hmm. coaching was yeah. like the way I thought you yeah. could do that, but then you can make impact on people's lives in sports, like, you know, broadcasting, coaching or playing. You just got to go out and, you mm-hmm. know, just be yourself and mm-hmm. do everything to the best of your ability. You yeah. Know? So. exactly well hey thanks Wyatt for diving into uh, how you got involved in basketball your love for Kevin Garnett Duke and and some stuff with broadcasting which would be awesome so thanks Wyatt we're going to dive into keep diving into more of our story um as Wyatt has many more to share about tennis stuff he's doing with Special Olympics speaking uh so thanks to Wyatt and we'll see you guys later see you